Hey guys, today I'm gonna to show you how to take a 2D logo and turn it into a 3D metallic logo in Apple Motion. A few weeks back, I did do a tutorial about how to make any logo 3D, and I will link to that here. If you missed it, you should definitely check that out. But today we're taking it one step further. We're gonna make that logo look metallic. So here we are in Apple Motion. I'm just gonna pull in this client logo here. It's actually a black cutout logo, so I'm just gonna throw a color solid behind it so you guys can see what we're doing. So now that we've got our logo here, the next thing we wanna do is head on up to library and go to generators and head down to gradient. We're gonna drag a gradient toward the top of our project pane. We're gonna change the colors of this gradient so they look more like a yellow gold. Let's uh, select generator in the inspector window and we're gonna see this kind of light blue to dark blue color swatch, I'm gonna drop down the gradient and we can change these colors with this menu. So what I'm first going to do is select on this first box here and I'm going to change the color and I'm going to make it like a gold yellow, maybe a little more on the darker side. And I'm going to select this last color swatch. And this time I'm going to grab the eyedropper and I'm going to color pick from my canvas. So it's the exact same color. And now I'm going to hover my cursor over the middle part of this color bar and just click anywhere and look, I get a new box. So I'm gonna select on that new box, make sure it's highlighted in blue, head on over to the color swatch again. And this time I'm just gonna slide up the value so it's like a brighter color. And to feather out this gradient more, let's look down here in our inspector window to these values, start and end. I'm going to select this value of 100 on the Y value. I'm going to click down on my mouse and then hold that button down while I slide my mouse forward to raise that value up. And I'm going to do the same on the end value, except this time I'm gonna slide backward, down, and there we go. That's the kind of gradient we're looking for. And maybe I'll even rotate that gradient a little bit by changing the X values. You can see there that now it's at more of a bit of an angle. I wanna select the gradient in my project pane, head on up to object and select add image mask. And then in our inspector window, we're gonna get this panel image mask here, and it's gonna ask for a mask source. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on this logo, hold down my mouse key, very important, and drag into that source window. Okay, now we are going to make this look three dimensional. So the first thing I need to do is head on up to the top center of my screen, hit add object and select camera. And it's gonna ask me if I wanna to switch to 3D. And yes, I do want to switch to 3D. Now I'm going to select the gradient in my project pane. I'm selected on the gradient, not the logo, the gradient. And I'm going to head up to the top right of my screen and I'm going to hit replicate. And if you watch that other logo tutorial, this looks familiar to you. you we've got a lot of versions of this logo and it's too many and it doesn't look right. So let's head on over to our inspector window, make sure we're selected on the replicator tab and I'm going to look at shape and I'm going to change it from rectangle to line. I'm going to change my start value from negative 100 to zero on the X value. And again, on the X value on endpoint, make that zero as well. And then we're gonna head down to the line here that says 3D, we're gonna check it. And now let's drop down the endpoint with this little arrow here. And now let's dial up the Z value by selecting that zero there, holding down on our mouse key, pushing our mouse forward. And to show you the depth on our logo, I'm gonna turn off that color solid. I don't think we need it anymore. Let me select the replicator in our project pane, head on over to properties, drop down the rotation, and then let's rotate on the Y value. And you can see that this logo is in fact very 3D looking. If you wanted the letters to look less deep, you would head back over to replicator and then replicator in your inspector window and then play with that Z value and see how it'll shrink back down. And then if you really wanted it to be very deep, that's how you would do it. Now you might see all the individual layers of our replicator. So let's look at this value here, points. Now I can slide this up to 20 and it does look more filled out there, you see that? So now we've got 20 versions of this logo. So it looks pretty solid, I think it could be better. We can actually go higher than 20 if you select the value 20 with your cursor, click down on your mouse and push your mouse forward. You can dial it up a little more. 
And now we're losing a lot of definition here, especially in this smaller text, keeping it constructive. So what I'm going to do is select in my project pane, the gradient this time is what we need. I'm on the gradient that is muted out. So once you create a replicator, it'll mute out your original element that you're replicating. And when I say muted, I mean that this becomes unchecked. So that's the version we want, the unchecked version. And we're gonna head on over to properties in our inspector window. We're gonna turn on the drop shadow and we're going to drop down this show menu here. And then we can make adjustments to the drop shadow. Hey guys, while I'm playing with these drop shadows, let me know if you're enjoying this video by giving me a thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button. And also don't forget to ring that notification bell. And then what I'd like to do is make it look as if there's a highlight coming over our metallic logo. Let me show you how to do that really quick. What we're going to do is select our original gradient in our project pane, right? The one that's muted. And we're going to go to generator in the inspector window. And remember when we played with these start and end values, I'm actually gonna keyframe them. I'm gonna start here at the beginning. I'm gonna have my playhead queued up to the very beginning of my timeline. And I'm going to make keyframes on start and end value. And let's play with the X values here. And then I'm going to drag my playhead down in the timeline and I'm going to make new keyframes on the start and end values. And then let's play and change these values a bit. So it looks like the light is moving. And the last thing I'm going to do is keyframe that rotation that we made on the replicator. So I'm gonna select replicator again in my project pane, head on over to properties in the inspector window. I'm gonna make a keyframe here at the very beginning of my timeline. I'm going to jump over to this keyframe where I changed my X values on the gradient. I'm going to make a new keyframe here on the Y value. Let's make it a positive 14 value. So it swings the other way and the light changes. And there you go, guys. That is how you make any logo look 3D and metallic in Apple Motion. Thank you so much for creating with me today. I picked out some other videos that I think you might like. Check those out and I will see you again.